This is the Sync 3 screen we're going to be met with from the vehicle when it's first started up. Now this one does have factory navigation, which is why we've got that map summary. So we've got our map as well as whatever radio stations currently playing, and we've also got the ability to look at our phone or add one in if it's not connected. Now if our phone was connected, this would show up with a different message. I'll show you that one in just a second. But let's start off with some basic settings. So starting off with our basic audio settings, we've got a couple different ways to change the sources. So we've got our AM, FM, Sirius XM, as well as our Bluetooth. If our phone was connected, it would also show up there as we move back. We've got a couple different ways we can tune. So we can tune by entering in a station there. We've got the ability to use that rocker in order to change stations, or we can press our voice command button on the steering wheel in order to be able to change stations as well. If we want to save a preset, all we're going to do is press and hold. And as you can see there, it saved that station directly as one of my presets. As we start to move down, we've got our phone button. So phone, adding a phone is actually a really, really straightforward process. All we're going to do is press that add Search phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Next up, you're going to want to make sure that on your cell phone that Bluetooth is turned on. So we're just going to turn Bluetooth on. We're going to give it a second, and as you can see there, so we've got Sync that shows up. Unfortunately, it doesn't say Bronco like it has in the past for other Ford vehicles, but we're just going to connect there. Confirm that the pin displayed on Sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so we want to make sure that those pins match up, and they do, so we're going to hit yes on the screen and pair on our phone. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Excellent. So as you can see there, it's also asking me if I want to if I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync. Absolutely want to do that. So we're gonna hit OK and select that. Now we've also got the option for the automatic contact download. I absolutely recommend turning that one on. And we just hit finish. So as we can see, we've got my recent calls, contacts, my phone, some basic settings. If you have multiple phones connected, you can change what phone you're running off of on Bluetooth. You can run Siri and a few other things. Now, as we go back to audio for a second there, and let's look at our sources. So as you can see there, we've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app that I've got installed on my phone. You'd also be able to find it under the app screen there. So if you have Spotify, things like that, you'd be able to play those apps directly through the middle screen. Really, really cool. In order to be able to delete a phone, equally straightforward. We're just going to go to our settings. And from there, we're just going to select phone. And we've got a couple different options. So you can see we can view devices, look at different text messaging options, roaming warnings, etc. To delete the device, all we're going to do is select on the device. We can either disconnect or completely remove. Remove yes, and the phone is now completely disconnected. So it's really that simple. Using factory navigation is a straightforward process. So we've got the ability to either run off of factory navigation, or we can run off of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever the case may be. Running off of factory navigation, though, very straightforward. We're going to start off with search. So what we're going to do is search for an address there. So we've got the address of the dealership. We're just going to press that. And we can either save it as a favorite, or we can just start to directly begin our navigation. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. Okay. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. So very straightforward there. If we want to cancel the route out, all we have to do is press the X button at the top in order to cancel. So as you can see there, route has now been canceled. Bringing our control screen back up, we've got a few different options now. We can move between different screen views. Navigation settings is the big one on this page. Looking at our map preferences. So we've got different options there. Breadcrumbs essentially is going to trace whatever routes you've taken. And then our point of interest icons. So if you want to find things like coffee shops, gas stations, etc., we'd turn this one on. Route preferences. Do you like the fastest route, shortest route, most eco-friendly route? You've got the ability to select it there. As we move down, we've got the ability to avoid freeways, toll roads, tunnels, and a number of other things. Whatever preferences you have set up there, it's going to dynamically update the map and the map route that you're taking in order to reflect that. Moving back, last one is going to be our navigation preferences. So different prompts, whether that's voice and tones, voice or strictly tones. And moving back, Next up, we've got the ability to look at our history. So if we've gone to different places, we can see where we've traveled to. We can look at our favorites, point of interest icons, and then the other two to highlight would be our home and our work address. By entering in an address here, we can press the voice button on the steering wheel, and that's going to automatically let us determine whether or not we're going to our home or to our work. And all we'd have to say is we'd press the voice button, say navigate home, and it'll take the address that we've saved in our home in order to be able to navigate us there. And that's going to be the basics of the navigation system. As we move into settings, tons of options there. So starting off with our sound settings, we've got the ability to change the treble mid-range bass and a number of other features. 
basic clock setting so we can go up or down an hour, we can go between AM or PM, or switch into that 24 hours so that military time instead. Automatic daylight savings time. What that's going to do is it's automatically going to flip us between, well, it's going to spring us forward or fall us back an hour, just depending on the time of year. And then the auto time zone update, if we are traveling across the country, east to west coast, west to east, whatever the case may be, this will automatically update the time as we start to move into different time zones. Bluetooth. We can turn Bluetooth off completely, or we can add another device in. So a Bluetooth enabled MP3 player, cell phone, whatever the case may be. Basic phone Search settings. For your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So that's where we would go to enter in a phone or to add a phone. We've also got the ability to do it down on the bottom of the screen. Moving into radio. So this one is actually a dynamic button, just based off of whether you're on AM, FM, or your Sirius XM. So as you can see there, we've got the ability to select preset pages. I always recommend having that at six, because that's going to give us up to 30 individual presets. But watch what happens when we go from AM, FM into Sirius. Let's go to our settings for a second there. We've now got some basic Sirius XM settings. So we can go to different category seeking, parental lockouts, and we've got a number of other options there. So really, really neat, especially if you're more of a heavy Sirius XM user. Moving back into our regular AM FM, as you can see, we've got our basic radio settings instead. Driver assistance, that's when we get into a lot of other options. So we've got our basic cruise control setting, which works actually technically three different ways. So our regular cruise control, which would be more like that old school cruise control. We've got our adaptive. So the adaptive essentially is that set it and forget it cruise. So let's say if you set it at 120 on the highway, if the car in front of you breaks, yours will automatically break. If it speeds up or get out of the way, yours will pick back up to speed. Intelligent takes the adaptive to the next level. So you, it's all based off of a tolerance. So let's say if you've got a 10 kilometer or 10 mile per hour tolerance, if you're traveling at 100, the car and then all of a sudden the vehicle recognizes that the speed drops from let's say 100 to 80, it's going to automatically break for you to 90 kilometers an hour. So it's really, really neat the way that that system works. And from there, we've got our lane keeping system. That's going to work three different ways. Way number one is going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake. So that alert. So if we start to veer over without signaling, we'll get a little shake on our steering wheel. Second one is the aid. So if we start to veer over without signaling, the vehicle will actually take over and it'll recenter you automatically. When we get into the alert and the aid, it will do both. So it's going to give you a bit of a steering wheel shake and it'll recenter you back into your lane. Alert intensity is the intensity of that steering wheel shake. Is it going to be a low, medium, or a high shake? Pre-collision assist. So really, really neat. If the vehicle senses a potential collision, there are a few things that could potentially happen. Active braking. If it senses a potential collision, the vehicle will automatically brake for you. With evasive steering, if it can't brake in time, it's going to take over the steering wheel and then it'll get you out of the way in order to either avoid or minimize the impact of the collision and how sensitive is the system. Next up is our speed side recognition. So really, really neat. There is the speed sign on the actual steering on the in the steering column there. But what happens is if we start to go a little bit faster, we can get a speed warning and then the tolerance for is it five kilometers, ten kilometers an hour over before we get that speed warning. Rear view camera, which is very straightforward, and then our blind spot system. So our blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And what'll actually happen there is. All right, rear view camera, very straightforward. Now our blind spot system. If we were to have somebody enter the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, we'd get a little nod, so as you can see there, so that's going to highlight orange. That's going to let us know that somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So let's make sure that that system's turned back on. And the trailer sway control. If the vehicle senses that there's potential trailer sway, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically apply braking to the engine in order to maybe be able to control that trailer sway. Cross traffic alert. If vehicles are coming perpendicular, so that left or right side, and you don't, well, whether you see it or not, with this setting turned on, the vehicle is going to warn you of a potential collision. From there, we've got our driver alert, which is tied into the lane keeping system. So if we get too many alerts letting us know, then it will tell us that we should probably take a break. As we start to move in, we've got a few other controls and a well, number of other controls and options, I should say, moving into some basic vehicle settings. This is where we're going to go to in order to change a few things. So how long is the vehicle going to idle for? Rear occupant alert. Really, really neat. Let's see how that works. And this is the rear occupancy alert that I was telling you about. So when the vehicle's turned off, this is the message we're going to see. So really, really beneficial. Again, as I mentioned, if you've got young kids, just as a reminder to make sure you check that back seat. 
So really, really cool. I love the fact that Ford's included this system. Next up is going to be the My Key system, which the My Key is going to let you set up certain limitations for an individual key fob. Where that comes into play is, let's say if you're giving the vehicle out to a child to use, or you want to play a prank on a spouse, you can set it so that a key fob can only go up to certain, will give you certain limitations. So maybe you can't go faster than 100 kilometers an hour. The radio won't play unless the seatbelt's plugged in. So lots of different options there. We've got a remote start setup. So whether or not remote start is even a thing, you've got the ability to remote start directly through the key fob or through your cell phone. We can turn that system on or off. When you remote start, what happens? Is it automatically going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Or is it going to be based off of your last settings? Your seats, if your heated seats were on, will it automatically do that? And then the duration of the remote start, will it last for five, 10 or 15 minutes? As we start to move down, we've got the ability to look at our windows, so remote open and close. Let's jump outside to see how that works. In order to use the key fob to roll the windows down very straightforward, all we're gonna do is press the unlock button twice. On the second press, we're gonna hold it. So one, two, and hold. You can see windows down across the board, really, really straightforward. In order to roll them back up again, we're just gonna press the lock button twice and same thing. And that second press you're gonna hold. So one, two, and hold. As you can see, windows back up. So really, really cool feature. From there, we've got our wiper settings now. So wipers, few different settings. They are rain sensing wipers in the Badlands edition. So we can turn that rain sensing wiper off if we want to. Rear wiper on when in reverse. What I recommend there is keeping that one on because if your front windshield wiper is going and you back up, it's automatically going to turn on that rear wiper for you as well. Basic vehicle lighting, we've got our auto high beam settings, so I do recommend keeping that one on. And the reason why is because the vehicle is automatically going to turn on the high beams for you. And then if it starts to recognize that there's an oncoming vehicle, it'll automatically dim them before turning them off completely. Auto lamp delay is when we go to lock the vehicle, how long do those lights stay on for? Basics about the lock itself. So we've got a couple different options there. So we've got our auto unlock, miss lock, chirp, etc. I do recommend keeping these things all standard. The one you might want to tweak is remote unlock. So when we unlock the vehicle, do all doors got unlocked or is it just the driver's door? So really a matter of preference and safety. And then the last one is going to be our intelligent access. Same thing, keep that one on. Big thing there is with some of these features set up, it's automatically going to lock the doors if the car's on and you leave with the fob in your pocket. So really, really beneficial there. So let's keep all of those settings as a default. As we move into Ford Pass Connect, so you do have the ability to use the vehicle as a wireless hotspot. You do need a data plan through a third party in order to be able to do that, but it's good for up to 10 devices. So really, really useful. Now, Ford Pass Connect, the vehicle, as I mentioned, so it does have a built-in modem. So you can remote start the vehicle for your, through your fob, but with that built-in modem, it also gives you the ability to remote start directly through your cell phone. So really, really cool fact there. Moving into some general settings, we've got different language settings, so English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit, kilometers per no, kilometers and liters per hundred or miles per gallon, the tire pressure, touchscreen beep. So the touchscreen beep is that beep. So if you're not a fan of it, you can turn that off. Automatic system updates. I absolutely recommend making sure you turn these ones on, be connected to Wi-Fi at home. And the reason why is because it's automatically going to update the vehicle software when that automatic system updates is turned on. And if for whatever reason, the vehicle's given you any issues, either with the Sync 3 system, with Ford Pass or any other things, just do a master reset or a Ford Pass reset to bring it back to your factory defaults. From there, we've got a couple other options. We've got the ability to easily connect to Wi-Fi. And as I mentioned, make sure that those two are turned on in tandem. 911 Assist, really, really useful feature. Make sure you have this one turned on. And the reason why is because with it turned on and your cell phone connected, if you're in a collision, the phone will automatically dial 911 for you. And the vehicle will contact and talk to the 911 operator. So really, really cool feature. Mobile apps, we've got a couple different options there, and there are some apps that will work through USB or just over Bluetooth. Moving into our display, so we've got a nice, beautiful display, but if you find it's a little bit too busy, a little bit too distracting, we can turn the display off. So we've got the display off, press the button, in, or press the screen in order to turn it back to life, and we've also got a calming screen. Now, a couple other things. We've got some, the ability to change some display settings. So if we press display off, it just kills off the display. Touching the screen will bring it back to life. If you just want more of a calming screen, we've got the ability to do that. So we've got the time and the date. Press again in order to bring that back to life. 
Moving back into our display, we can change the background image, the brightness, as well as the mode. So we can change between our auto, daytime, or nighttime mode. So auto is automatically going to flip us between day or nighttime, but I personally love the look of the nighttime mode because I love blue, but again, really a matter of preference there, whether or not you go between the auto setting or and let the vehicle determine if it's going to be the bright or that blue setting instead, again, based off of how bright it is outside. And as we go back, a couple other options. We've got our voice control. So as you can see there, we've got a few different options, but I want you to listen to something for a second. So advanced mode currently turned off. Let's press the voice command button. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. Okay, so it's changed radio stations, so it's tuned it out to a different station, and it gave us a message letting us know that. Now, if we turn advanced mode on, let's try that again. 97.7. Nothing. But look at what happened. It did change the station. So with the advanced mode on, that just means that we're not going to get quite as many prompts. As we get into our phone confirmation, so if we're making a phone call, do we want to connect with this person? Yes or no? And then we've got our voice command list. So our voice command list is this little list that comes up when we press that voice button on the steering wheel. You can cancel out of that screen easily. And jumping back, last one is going to be our valet mode. So valet mode, we do have the option of locking the screen out by entering in a four digit number. Don't use 0000, do something a little bit more challenging. But as you can see there, we physically can't press the screen at all. And the reason why is because we've locked it out. So really useful if you've got a valet parking the vehicle, enter that four digit code in order to be able to unlock it again. Last one is going to be our navigation settings, which we've already gone through when we went through the basic nav down there. Step number one, what we're going to do is make sure that we take our USB cable and all we're going to do is enter it into any of the available USB ports. Step number one, really, really straightforward. From there, all we're going to do is take that USB cable and we're just going to insert it into our phone and watch what happens. So phone is on there, but we've now got an Apple CarPlay message. So CarPlay lets you use your phone in a way, etc. We're just going to hit continue there. And in order to use CarPlay, we have to make sure that we agree to this. So we're agreed and just a second there so unlock in order to be able to start carplay so on your phone just enter in your number you can use your face id fingerprint unlock whatever the case may be but as you can see there we now have my phone mirrored so it's really that simple another message popped up there asking me that if i want to allow carplay to go while well, my phone is locked we absolutely want to allow that and this is the basic, so really, really neat. We do have the option through the phone in order to be able to change that around. As you can see, we can look at my phone, music, we can go through Google Maps, we can look at my messages, we've got my podcasts, and a number of other things. So LiveX Live, we can play through that as well. Pressing this button on the bottom left is going to act as the home button on your phone, so we can go back to the home screen from there. If we ever need to get back to the actual home screen of Sync 3, we're just gonna press this forward sync button, and that brings us back to the default there. And as you can see, we've got my phone, maps, and CarPlay again. So if we hit Maps for a second there, we do have factory navigation, but if you prefer Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze, you've got the capabilities to do that. Jumping back home again will bring us back to the home screen. So really, really neat. Now, one thing may happen is maybe you want to be able to physically charge your phone because you don't have a wireless charging pad available, but you still do need to make sure that you're using the regular system. So in order to make sure that that happens, all we're going to do, go to Settings. We've got Apple CarPlay. And we're just going to turn Apple CarPlay off. So as you can see there, it's now defaulted back to the factory defaults, while at the same time, my phone is still actively charging. So really, really beneficial there. I'm still physically connected, connected over Bluetooth, but we can run off of the factory navigation instead of running off of my cell phone. So really, really straightforward. And then all we have to do in order to remove CarPlay, we can remove my phone. Yes. And as you can see there, CarPlay is now completely gone. And then just disconnect from there. Setting up Android Auto is a very similar process. All we're going to do is make sure that we've got our USB cable. We're just going to insert it into the bottom of our phone and give it a second there. There we go. So we've got an Android Auto message. So it's going to extend the Android platform. Very similar to what we just saw in Apple CarPlay. We're just going to hit continue. And then we've got some basic terms and conditions. So again, we do have to make sure that we connect and we agree with that in order to be able to use Android Auto. Now it's asking me for some more information on the phone. So welcome to Android Auto. We need to unlock the phone in order for it to work. So phone is unlocked. So let's unlock to continue. And just a second there. So, oh, wait, what? 
and we're connected. Really that simple on Android Auto. It's amazing how quick this thing is. We're now fully paired and on the phone, it's now asking me to allow access to my messages, which yeah, let's go for it. Let's make sure that we're fully connected there. Automatically download our contacts. Yes, we want that to happen as well. So as you can see there, we've got Android Auto now installed. So very straightforward. We've got the Waze app. We've got Google Maps. We've got my podcast, phone, calendars, news alerts, reminders, all sorts of things. So very, very neat. You can still use the Google Assistant there. You can press that. You can press the button on the steering wheel in order to make it happen. You can choose Waze if you prefer Waze. You can choose Google Maps if you prefer Google Maps. It's really a matter of preference there. Now you can use Waze if you want to. You can use Google Maps if you want to. Really a matter of preference what map application you use. Very straightforward. All we would do is search for an address in order to be able to use it. Maybe you just want to use regular built-in navigation instead. Very, very straightforward. Very similar to what we saw in Android or Apple CarPlay. We're just going to press the exit button there. And we're just going to search for Android Auto. And as you can see at the very bottom though, so now it's got us in Maps or we're jumping back into Android Auto. So we can either completely remove my phone, we can turn off Android Auto completely, which is then going to default us back to factory navigation, while at the same time making sure that the phone is still charging. In order to remove the phone, all we're going to do is literally do that. Remove Galaxy, yes. And the phone is now gone. It's no longer connected, but I'm still charging, which is really, really cool. Unplug and you're set to go.